Okay, so I make a lot of Apple-centric videos, which I guess means PC users or Android users often feel left out here. But today's video is something that everybody watching this can relate to on some level. Why am I so confident about that? Well, because 100% of you are watching this video on YouTube right now. And this video is all about improving your YouTube experience. Thing is, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I like it a lot. And while the content is great, essentially an infinite stream of education, stimulation, and general interestingness all around, YouTube doesn't exactly make our lives easier in terms of managing all of this wonderful content, both what we've already seen and what we are yet to see, but also what we might want to actually save for reference later after watching something good. And what about if you wanted to categorize any of these videos? Literally the only tool YouTube gives us to manage videos is playlists. You don't get tags, you don't get folders, just playlists. And for seemingly forever, these playlists have been as basic as you could possibly imagine. God, it's so basic. But lo and behold, a week or so ago, from the YouTube Lords on high, they rather quietly introduced a new feature. Uh, girl, that's approved. <laughs> No, I'm not talking about how you can make shorts that are three minutes long now. I'm talking about how you can now add custom graphics as playlist covers. This may not seem like a mind blowing feature to you. And yeah, maybe it isn't in the grand scheme of things, but I wanna walk you through how you can take full advantage of this new feature to enhance your YouTube experience, especially for those of you who are not just content consumers, but also content creators. Typically, whenever you add videos to a playlist, the playlist cover ends up just being the latest video you've added to the playlist. So that means your playlist thumbnail is likely to keep changing. And if you have lots of playlists, as you're scrolling through your long list of playlists, it can be hard to quickly visually pinpoint which playlist is which. And for those of us who are content creators, it can be hard to quickly determine which of the playlists are meant for just us to see versus what we want our audience to see. Basically, there is no visual distinction between private playlists and the public playlists that we feature on our respective YouTube channels. So I wanna walk you through how I've taken this new custom playlist graphics feature from YouTube and ran with it to make my quality of life much better as I both watch other people's videos and share my own videos with you all on this channel. In addition to how I'm using these custom playlist thumbnails, I've got a few other little tips and tricks and resources that I'll share later on in this video. But first, let me show you how to designate custom graphics for your playlists. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a desktop computer first, and then how to do it on your mobile device. The process is pretty similar for both. So on a desktop, Mac or PC, of course, while you're logged in, click on playlist over here on the left side. If you don't see it, click this little menu button to expand your left side menu options. Kind of weird to me how they don't display playlists in the minimized form, because I think playlists are essential to the YouTube experience, but oh well. So expand this out and click on playlists. It would be nice if you could change your playlist covers from here, but alas, at this point in time, they don't let you do so. And you know what else sucks here is you can't actually create a new playlist from here. Yes, you're on the playlist page, but you cannot create a new playlist on the playlist page. Come on, YouTube. You can do better than that. Hire me. I will fix it. All of it. I hate poor usability, but I digress. Okay, back to the lecture at hand. So what you need to do is click on view full playlist. Make sure you don't just click on the playlist name as that will immediately start playing the first video in the playlist. No, you have to click on view full playlist in order to get to the playlist editing screen that we want. A couple caveats here. If you currently have no videos in this playlist already, you actually cannot add a custom playlist thumbnail, which makes no sense, but again, it is what it is. So first be sure to add at least one video to your playlist. Once you have at least one video in your playlist, then you'll notice this little edit button in the lower right corner here. Click this and then choose from library. And that's it. Add your custom thumbnail graphic. All right, and now for how to do this on mobile. This time you need to click on you at the bottom right. Click on view all next to playlists. Side note, see how there's a plus button there? On mobile, you can actually create a new playlist from here, but you can't do this from the playlist page on desktop. What's with you, man? Come on! 
Where is the consistency? Anyway, tapping view all brings us to the list of all of our playlists. Once again, better experience here on mobile than on desktop. You don't even need to delve into the individual playlists as you can actually add or modify a playlist cover from this level. Simply tap on the three dots next to the playlist name and choose edit. Then like we did before, tap the edit button at the bottom right corner of the playlist current thumbnail graphic and tap choose from library. Choose your graphic and you're good to go. All right, so that's the basics of how to designate custom thumbnails for all your YouTube playlists. Taking a look at how I've set up mine, you can quickly get the sense of clarity I now have as I browse through my playlists. Notice how I've created this green folder for my dedicated download later playlist. Now, when I say download later, I don't mean download the video within the YouTube app to watch while offline, which is a feature that YouTube premium users have. No, I actually add videos to the download later playlist when I want to download the actual video files to my hard drive to add to my personal library. I tend to download and then clear this playlist once a week using a nifty little app called PullTube, which is part of my setup subscription. What's really cool is you can just copy paste the entire playlist link and PullTube will automatically download all videos in the playlist as MP4 files. If you're not yet using setup, I highly recommend giving it a go. You get access to tons of great apps like PullTube and also Better Touch Tool, Bartender, CleanShot X, which I use for screenshots and all my screen recordings used to make these videos, Awesome Habits, Yoink, and so many more. Link is in the description, so if you wanna give it a go, there's a free trial, so no risk. And again, I can't recommend Setup highly enough. Honestly, as 2024 is winding down, Subscribing to Setup would be a great way to kickstart your new year and reach new levels of productivity using your Apple devices. Yes, there are apps for both your Mac and your iOS devices. All right, so back to my playlist here. In addition to this neon green graphic for download later, I set up this yellow green star graphic for what I call super saves, which are basically videos I've already watched, but I wanna keep them close at hand for future reference. And I created this orange graphic for my playlist called Comment Later, which I use to sort of temporarily bookmark YouTube videos that I wanna to return to later to post a comment. Next up, I've got these blue graphics for videos that I want to either save to Eagle or save to Raindrop. If you're not familiar with either of those, both are truly awesome at what they do. Eagle is more of a media asset library app, whereas Raindrop is more of a pure bookmarking app. I'm gonna be doing in-depth tutorials of how I use each in the coming weeks. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, do so now, because you do not wanna miss those videos. Eagle has been game-changing for me this past few weeks, and there's so much to it that I will probably do an entire series on it, not just one video. So subscribe to stay tuned for all that goodness. Scrolling down here a bit, I created this one playlist called Sermons. It's got nothing to do with church or religion, but basically I save videos here that are motivational, inspirational, chock full of wisdom and insights, the kind of stuff I should rewatch over and over again to fully absorb. You know, all those fundamental truths and mantras that you ought to preach to yourself in order to stay focused and optimistic as you move forward in life, doing whatever it is you do. I don't currently make this sermons playlist public, but I do often share the kind of videos that are on there on my Twitter. So if you want a steady stream of inspirational content regarding creativity and productivity, come follow me on Twitter. I'm Jay Caslow on there. And also I created this share later playlist specifically for videos that I may not want to permanently save for myself, but there are specific people that I wanna share these videos with later. All right, so let's talk for a second about YouTube's default watch later playlist. This is probably the one playlist that most everybody uses. But again, there's no tags or folders or anything. So if you just lump everything into this one playlist, you'll likely end up wasting a lot of time in the long run just trying to go back and find a specific video you saved a week or three ago, or imagine if you saved it over a month ago. Good luck finding it in a stack of potentially hundreds or even thousands of uncategorized random videos that have caught your attention at some point in time. Yeah, good luck with that. In addition to the problem of lumping everything together into this one playlist, perhaps those of you who are hardcore YouTube users like myself have run into this issue as well. YouTube actually caps the size of playlists at 5,000 videos. 
After using YouTube for several years, I maxed out my watch later playlist at some point a couple years ago. So I ended up creating a workaround for this. At first, I just created a second playlist, which I named Watch Later Overflow. That somewhat helped with the quantity issue, but think about it. After a month or so passed, if I wanted to go back and watch a video that I saved in order to watch later, I'd also have to remember, well, did I save the video in the default Watch Later playlist or did I save it in the Watch Later Overflow playlist? A bad situation that you don't wanna be in. So I gave it more thought and realized it'd make far more sense to create multiple Watch Later playlists that are broken down in terms of not only content, but also in terms of watchability. What do I mean by that? Well, when I'm cooking, I'm fairly immersed in what I'm doing. So my eyes can't be on my iPad watching whatever videos are playing. So I can listen the whole time and occasionally watch with my eyes, but basically I can't be having After Effects or Photoshop tutorials playing while I'm cooking since they require my full attention. So I created a bunch of very specific playlists that I'll only watch at my desk or maybe while having lunch. As you can see here, I've got my multiple watch later playlists that I've named with the prefix WL, obviously for watch later. So for example, I've got WL After Effects, WL Photoshop, WL Notion, etc. Whereas anything that I can watch in the background without my full attention, I added it to a new playlist called WLBG. In the interest of simplicity, I didn't even segment things out in terms of what the content is, like whether it's pertaining to history, religion, or politics, or whether it's a podcast or a video essay or whatever. A lot of times a video's content can be a combination of a lot of things. So I didn't want to waste time and brain power deciding how to categorize every interesting video that I come across. Instead, I know that whatever I add to this playlist is something I can watch slash listen to in the background while doing something else like cooking or working out or whatever. For the time being, I've stylized all these playlist covers as just red for YouTube. So as I scroll through my many highly specific playlists, it's very easy for me to get a quick sense of which playlist is what without having to concentrate very hard. Imagine this compared to how it was before the custom thumbnails when these playlist covers were constantly changing and all over the place. The list is much cleaner and clearer now. In theory, I could colorize these WL playlists a bit more, like maybe purple and pink for After Effects and Premiere Pro, blue for Photoshop, etc. But I kind of prefer the simplicity of just red since I've created a way more stylized look for my public playlists the ones that I feature on my YouTube channel for all to see. Those really should be more amped up and stylistic, whereas the rest of these can be simpler since they're just for my eyes only. All of this is continually evolving, but just wanted to share how I've set up this system for managing all the interesting YouTube videos I come across, which is literally hundreds of new videos every week. I love how I've set up my system on many levels, but mostly because it's just super clear. Which videos for me to download later, to share later, to comment on later, or videos I haven't gotten to yet to actually watch later. And all of those playlists are visually distinct from my public playlists that are featured for you guys to watch on my YouTube channel, which you should totally subscribe to right now. If you're not organized, things can get super chaotic real quick. So give it some thought and build a system that works for you. And now that you know how to designate custom thumbnails for your YouTube playlists, you can totally make them your own. Like I said at the beginning, YouTube doesn't really give us many tools to customize our viewing experience and manage the videos we both watch and create. So whatever tools they do give us, we gotta make the most of them. By the way, if you like these watch later playlist graphics I've made, I'm actually offering them as a free template download in my new Gumroad store. If you wanna thank me with a few bucks for it, great. Otherwise, take it and run with it. Happy birthday! Note that because of licensing reasons, I can't actually include the same font I'm using in mine, but instead I've included a font that's freely available as part of Adobe Fonts. But it's a layered PSD file, so you can change it to whatever font you want in Photoshop or whatever other graphics app you use that can open PSD files. This system I've built works really well for me, and maybe it can work for you too, but if not, hopefully what I've shown you today at least helps spark some ideas for you building a nice and clear visual system 
for optimizing your YouTube experience. If you've gotten any value from this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this, where I offer tips and tricks and in-depth tutorials on growing your YouTube channel, creating graphics in Photoshop and Illustrator, using AI tools, editing in Premiere, animating in After Effects, and overall boosting your productivity and leveling up your creative skills. All right, see you in the next video. Hmm, what to watch next?